Welcome to Hearing God's Voice. In today's message, God Talked with Isaiah, Dr. McLuhan shares the prophet's amazing vision of God and the change of perspective that altered his life's direction. What do you do when someone you have loved and respected stumbles? Today we'll hear the story of how Isaiah reacted to the fall of one of Israel's greatest kings. If it were not for how Uzziah ended his life, he would have been as well known as David, Solomon, Hezekiah, or Josiah. The list of King Uzziah's accomplishments is well documented in the Chronicles of the Kings. We read King Uzziah made machines invented by skillful men to be on the towers and the corners to shoot arrows and great stones his fame spread far, for he was marvelously helped until he was strong. Second Chronicles chapter 26 and verse 15. King Uzziah reigned over Judah for 52 years. Sadly, he became so powerful that he thought he could take the place of the priest who had been selected to offer incense on the altar in the holy place. Uzziah ignored the warnings of the priests and the advisors. He said, please don't do that, king. And when he came out of the holy place, he was covered with leprosy and died in isolation. The nation, including Isaiah, was shaken up by the tragic downfall of their mighty king. And before asking the question, what would you have done if you were in Isaiah's shoes? Let's step back a moment and meet the man, Isaiah. The Arabic name for Isaiah is a Shia. He's not mentioned in the Quran or in the Hadith at all. Isaiah is named over 50 times in the Bible. He is the most quoted prophet in the New Testament. Jesus quoted Isaiah more than any of the other prophets. In 1947, a complete scroll of the copy of Isaiah that dated back as many as 200 years before Christ was found in what has come to be called the Qumran community. These documents are now known as the Dead Sea Scrolls. And many archaeologists consider that these scrolls to be the greatest discovery of the 20th century. These documents demonstrate the accuracy of the Old Testament and especially the quotes that we find in the New Testament. This is a photograph of the original sc scroll. Obviously, photographs are not allowed of the original. It is a copy of the original taken in Qumran. And it shows just how readable the scroll is today, more than 2,000 years after it was first made. The impact of Isaiah on the New Testament cannot be overstated. When Jesus announced the beginning of his, misery, his ministry in Nazareth, he said he came to fulfill the words of prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, Jesus said, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives and the opening of prisons to those who are bound, and to proclaim the years of the Lord's favor. Isaiah chapter 61 and verse 1. Now, how did all of this come about? After the death of King Uzziah, Isaiah made the best decision he could have made. He visited the temple, hoping to find answers from the Lord. In our text today, we find Isaiah experiencing a profound encounter with the Lord himself. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on the throne, high and exalted, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 1. When things don't go the way you want them to go down here on earth, it's time to look up and connect with Father in heaven. All of a sudden, Isaiah was taken in the spirit to a place that he had never been before. He was given the perspective of heaven in the middle of the earthly chaos 
that he was experiencing. He saw the Lord in heaven, but the train of his robe flowed all the way down to earth and filled the temple. What an incredible thought. Stunning connection between heaven and earth by the very robe, the train of the Lord himself. I invite you to visualize the spirit in the spirit realm, Father's robe flowing down from heaven, filling this place with his presence. Wherever you are, feel the presence of heaven invading your space. Heaven has a solution for whatever you are facing today. But there's more. Isaiah said, above him were seraphs, each with six wings. With two, they covered their face, and with two, they covered their feet, and with two, they were flying. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 2. What Isaiah saw the seraphs doing was not nearly as important as what Isaiah heard the seraphs saying. They were calling out to one another, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is filled with his glory. And at the sound of their voices, the doorposts and the threshold shook and the temple was filled with smoke. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 3 and 4. The sinful behavior of the king, the people, and Isaiah himself could not pollute or disturb the holiness of heaven. Isaiah watched as the glory of heaven descended upon the sinfulness of the city and shook the temple. God is shaking things up not only in America, but around the world. Things are shaking in Russia. Things are shaking in the Middle East. Things are shaking in the Gulf. Religious persecution is shaking the church. And in the middle of the shaking, the Spirit of God filled the temple just like it did on the day Solomon dedicated that original building. The Spirit of God loves to shift our focus from the world that we are in to the splendor of God's presence. Isaiah made a deep discovery. He may have thought that his character was better than the king's character or behavior. And today there are a lot of people who are pointing fingers and flaws at others. But God drew into sharp focus the sins of Isaiah himself. Isaiah found out that he was comparing himself to the wrong person. The Bible says, woe is me. He cried out, woe is me. I am ruined. I am a man of unclean lips, and I live amongst a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord God Almighty. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 5. One translation says, Isaiah said, I am undone, or I have come apart, I have fallen apart. And before God can use us, he needs to unglue us. He needs to break our pride so he can use our lives for his glory. We are living in a moment when our nation, when God is shifting our focus from political positions to spiritual realities. God is holy and he is ready to send his cleansing presence into our soul. One of the seraphs flew at me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken from the tongues of the altar. This is the incense that was placed upon him, the fragrance of God's presence. When the fragrance of God's presence touches you, our lives change. And God is sending messengers right now throughout America and the world, calling us to turn away from our living sinful lives and self-centered lives, Isaiah said. He touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin has been atoned for. What wonderful words. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 7. I meet people all the time who are so weighed down with sin and don't know what to do about it. The shocking truth is that even though Isaiah was a prophet, he discovered that he was a sinner. And not only was Isaiah a sinner, he said he lived with people who are sinners. <clears throat> Isaiah had a complete change in the direction of his life. 
And this was the moment when Isaiah, when God said to Isaiah, your political work is done. And from now on, you will spend the rest of your life telling people how to live righteously. Then I heard a voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And he said, here I am, send me. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 8. God is calling people today to carry this message of salvation. Isaiah said yes to God. He said, here I am, send me. And God is looking for your yes. Who will say to God, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Who will say with me, yes, Lord, send me. Carry this powerful message of Jesus and redemption. Well, what message did Isaiah carry? He began by speaking about his own encounter with the Lord. He begins his prophecy by saying, come now, let's reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are as scarlet, they shall be white as snow, and though they are red like crimson, they shall be like wool. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 18. Are those good words to you as you hear them today? God is offering you a way to escape the sin that you're carrying. Who's ready to have your guilt and sin taken away from you? For 700 years, before the birth of Jesus, Isaiah revealed God's plan to save people from their sin. Isaiah prophesied that a virgin would conceive and bear a child. The Quran and the Bible agree that no other person was conceived the way Jesus was conceived. Isaiah said, behold, the Lord himself will give you a sign. You've been asking God for a sign. Here's one. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and you shall call his name Emmanuel. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 14. What does Emmanuel mean? It means God with us. It means that God came down to be with humanity in the birth of Jesus. That Jesus was fully human and fully God. The human mind cannot comprehend this, but God knew what he was doing and what we needed. It was easy for Isaiah to understand this because in his vision he had seen the glory of God come down to earth. and The glory of God indeed was contained in that cradle that rocked the baby Jesus. He knew that one day God would send the promised one who would indeed be God with us, Emmanuel. 700 years before the birth of Jesus, Isaiah also prophesied that Jesus would be crucified for the sins of the people. He wrote, he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities, and upon him was laid the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 5. Shift the question from asking how could Jesus die to, for us to asking the question why did Jesus die for us? Isaiah said Jesus did this because all of us, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, but the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of of us all. Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 6. Who is ready to give up your way and follow God in his way? Isaiah promised that Jesus not only died for our sins, he died for our diseases. He said, by his wounds we are healed. And when people were asking the question, how is Jesus able to heal people the way he does? Matthew gave us a very clear answer. That evening, they brought to him many who were oppressed by demons, and he cast them out, the spirits out with the word, and healed all the sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. He took our illnesses and bore our diseases. Matthew chapter 8, verse 16 17 sometimes. 
People say to me, there wasn't healing in the cross, just salvation. Matthew says, Isaiah said, it was for our healing. I believe there are people watching today who Jesus wants to heal. We've already released some healing words in the longer service. I just heal, release some more migraine headaches, go. In Jesus' name, diabetes, go. In Jesus' name, accident injuries, both that were your fault and not your fault, be healed. In Jesus' name, sports injuries, be healed now. In Jesus' name, traumatic head injuries of all types of cancers, blind eyes be open, deaf ears be open. Write to us right now as we're streaming live. We'll pray for you before the day is over. God loves to heal people. And the good news is Jesus released the power of God to heal diseases, to help people believe that God gave him the authority to forgive sins. He healed people before they believed in him. And Jesus will heal you before you believe in him because he knows if you are really healed, you will want to know how you were healed. And Isaiah said it is by the blood of Jesus. And some listening to this message have seen the Lord high and exalted just like Isaiah did. Some have seen for the very first time that Jesus is more than a prophet. He is indeed the exalted one in heaven. If you have understood Jesus today in a new way, you've understood compared to Jesus, you are a sinful person. Today you've understood that I need to be forgiven for my sins. Like Isaiah, you've seen Jesus. He came to die for you in your place on the cross. I invite you to ask Jesus to forgive you for all the sins you have committed. Ask him to fill you with his Holy Spirit. If you just prayed with me to accept Jesus as your Savior, write to me and tell me about your decision to follow Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for coming to pay the price for our sins. Thank you for forgiveness and new life as a free gift of faith. We receive your salvation, not because we are good enough, but because Jesus was perfect. We give you our yes today. Use us for your kingdom. Amen. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.